Which is the best type of close air support or cast planes to build in Hearts of Iron 4? We're going to find out just that in this video by doing a few tests. There are several approaches to building casts. You can try to maximize agility and air defense to reduce your losses from enemy fighters, or you can focus on stacking the maximum amount of ground attack per plane to inflict the most damage, or you can go down the middle of the road where you keep your air defense high and ground attack decent at the cost of losing agility. Here's how we're going to find out which philosophy is best. We're going to have a fight between the Brits and the Germans in Ukraine to see which type of close air support reigns supreme. In the skies we have a thousand British Spitfires who will defend against a thousand German fighters and a thousand of the various types of casts that we're going to test in this video. As for ground troops, on the British side we have defensive infantry divisions with 24 combat with engineers, artillery and anti-air as support companies. Their task will be to defend this perimeter and I've set them up like so. On the German side we have attacking infantry which is of the 7-3 variety including these support companies plus tanks that are 35 combat with that are with this template. We have tanks, we have motorized and we have one battalion of medium SP anti-air and medium uh, self-propelled artillery with these support companies. I haven't min-maxed the German tank models or self-propelled arty or anti-air. I have just used the Panzer Forst, Ostfind and Hummel variants which are the historical templates that you can use without any design modifications on your own. So here's how we're gonna do this. I'm going to put my infantry on automatic attacks with the battle planner and force attack and then I've set up a path for my panzers to follow so they meet and complete the encirclement. To make sure that they keep attacking, I'm also doing force attack on the tanks as well. Aside from measuring the time at which the tanks meet up here, we're also going to measure how much damage we do to enemy troops with our cast and how much IC we lose in terms of fighters and lost close air support planes for the damage that we do and for the time that we complete the encirclement. So our very first test will actually not involve any airplanes. I want to see how fast we complete the encirclement without having the support from the air. Let's give it a go. And I'll just add command power so we can force attack as soon as these guys are done. This will be the only time that we need to force attack like that the second time because otherwise the airplanes will help us complete the encirclement faster. So we completed the encirclement in 19 days and 15 hours without any support from the air. Now we're going to check out how our air will help us complete the encirclement faster and which is the best cast variant to do encirclements and bomb enemy troops the most effectively. For our second test we're going to finally use air superiority and close air support. To be fair air superiority won't be much of a thing because we have a thousand versus a thousand and fighters so we don't get a bonus from that. What we will get a bonus from though is ground support from the cast. Our first cast model that we will test is the so-called agility and air defense maximizing cast. I have removed all bomb locks here. The only thing I have is triple rocket rails which do not reduce agility when you do close air support. This way we get a meager 18 ground attack which is not that great. However, our agility pretty much stays the same almost when we do close air support. Okay, so let's give it a shot. The test is running. With CAS that maximizes air defense and agility at the cost of ground attack, we have finished our encirclement slightly earlier at 22 or 10 p.m. rather on the 17th of April. When we press F3 and we click on the details of the air battle, we can see that we have lost 147 fighters plus 218 close air support while we have eliminated 233 enemy fighters and we have done a total total of 27.4 damage to enemy troops. Okay, time for another test.
This time we're substituting the Agility Focus cast with the so-called Gladiator cast. This is a design that I came up with for my Meta Air Guide as Germany. So this one has really decent air defense on ground attack missions, C19.5, but it has a single rocket rail to enable these defensive modules down here. So it sacrifices a tiny bit of ground attack for better protection. However, it still has 30 ground attack, which is better than the Agility Focus. Focused cast. Let's see how this goes. The encirclement was completed at 3 a.m. on the 17th of April, which is the same day as the previous test, however, much earlier during the day. With more ground attack, we make better progress, although here the progress is not that impressive, to be fair. In terms of what we lost, we can see that we've lost more fighters here, 171 fighters and 333 support. While we did eliminate 228 enemy fighters, however, look at this thing we have bombed 63.5 enemy troops which is much more than the first test Lastly, we're testing what I like to call the Giga Chat Cast. Now, this is a big and expensive boy here because it has 56 production cost due to its dual engine 3, which, however, supports an anti tank cannon 2 plus two small bomb bays. This thing has a ground attack of 46.5, which is about 50% more compared to the regular cast that we've tested. Still, it's much more expensive, but let's see how it performs. So now we finished our encirclement on the 15th of April, which is, I think, more than a day compared to the other two. And we can see that we have bombed 94.5 enemy troops, which is a lot more compared to the middle variant. However, we still lost quite a few of these close air support planes. And considering the fact that they cost 56 IC per plane, this adds up to a lot. Our fighter losses, I think, are quite acceptable. Now, the test that we just did certainly does not give us the full picture because as you can see, the most expensive cast that we're using costs 56 IC, which is a lot, especially compared to the cheapest one at 29 IC and the regular one that we're using at 33 IC. So to equalize everything, I'm going to have a budget of 56,000 IC, which is this number times a thousand. And then we're going to divide it by 29 and separately we're going to divide 56,000 by 33 as well. And we're going to bomb exactly for 10 days with the most expensive close air support, a thousand of them, 1,931 of the high agility CAS and 1,697 of the regular CAS. That I'm using and this would hopefully help us figure out which is the best variant to use. So we're starting with the high agility cast which is also the cheapest. Let's see how 1931 of them will do over a period of 10 days. So after 10 full days, we've lost 70 fighters, 229 of our own high agility cast. Meanwhile, the enemy has lost 162 fighters and we've bombed 28.3 enemy troops. Now let's check how our regular cast will do compared to the high agility one when everything else is equal. So after 10 full days, we've lost 75 fighters, 204 CAS, but we have bombed 51.4 troops and we have taken down 154 enemy fighters. This means that even with IC costs and time equalized, you still end up doing twice as much damage compared to the high agility version. Finally, it's time to test the Giga Chat model. Let's see what comes up. So 
So here we've lost 84 fighters and 193 casts. However, we have damaged enemy troops for 70 damage, which is about 20 more compared to the middle variant. And the enemy has lost 132 fighters. So the tests are complete. I will display the results from the latest one down here. But what can we conclude from everything that we did so far? For most people, the variant where you sacrifice a tiny bit of ground attack to maximize air defense and you say screw you to agility is the best thing. These casts gave us a very reasonable loss ratio compared to the damage that they did. When we compare the regular cast to the high agility cast, you lose about 10% more IC with this model. However, you do twice as much damage compared to the high agility variants. However, that's not to say that the other two cast variants don't have a use. If you want to truly minimize your IC losses and still get the 27 to 30% bonus to attack close air support provides, you can go for the high agility cast. With this variant, you will reduce your fighter losses to a minimum which should help you to some degree to win the air war and then you can bomb with impunity meanwhile what we did find about the giga chat variant is that it will still do the most damage out of all of the variants even when ic is equalized however the cost of that will be that you also incur the highest losses still if you want to have a maximum impact and complete your encirclements the fastest the giga chat variant is the clear winner you can probably combine it with high agility cast so you minimize your losses from the beginning you achieve air superiority and then you can send these out in important battles in important theaters where you do your most important encirclements and the biggest ones and this plane will help you complete them the fastest while you do the most damage to enemy troops folks this is not all i have one last big takeaway from this video for for you but before we see it please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content so right now we're going to test how will we fare against divisions that do not have support anti-aircraft so i've switched the divisions here of the uk so they are exactly the same the only difference is that they have no support anti-air with them i'm going to use the giga chat variant a thousand of them plus a thousand of our own planes and see how much damage we'll end up doing As you can see, we did so much soft attack that we didn't even complete our encirclement here. Our troops just ran over the enemy in 12 days compared to the 15 that we had without support anti-air. And during this time, we did three times more damage compared to divisions that have support anti-aircraft in them. So that's the last big takeaway from this video, I guess. Always put support anti-aircraft in your divisions to ensure that you don't suffer this much damage. It is truly massive and of course you won't inflict anywhere near as much damage to enemy close air support which will make it really really bad for you. Thanks for watching partner. I hope you found this information useful. Balkan Cowboy signing out.